In the previous video, we covered the for loop, which is a good strategy if you want to execute some code at a known amount of times. In many cases, however, you'll want to run some code until a particular criterion is met. In this case, you don't necessarily know how many times the loop should be run, so a while loop is a better candidate. A while loop allows you to execute some code until some condition is met. The basic structure of a while loop is as follows. Typing the word while denotes a keyword that MATLAB recognizes. The next item is a condition, which can include relational operators and logical operators. What follows in the lines below are the main code you wish to execute. These lines of code will repeat indefinitely until the while condition is no longer satisfied. Finally, once the main code is complete, the end keyword denotes the end of the loop and instructs MATLAB to return to the top of the loop and check the while condition again. Let's see a really basic example of this in action. We start with the keyword while, and then state our while condition being that the value n is less than 10. So as long as the value n is less than 10, the main code should be executed. In the main code, we can simply increase the value n by 1, and then end the loop. Of course, in this case, we also need to initialize the variable n because the first time through the loop, MATLAB needs a value of n to check against the upper limit of 10. Also, at the end of the loop, we can display the value n so we can verify that the loop runs correctly. What we can expect from this loop is that as long as the value n is less than 10, we'll keep increasing the value n by 1. At the end of the code, after the loop is finished, the result should be that n is equal to the upper limit we placed. Let's look at a variation of this example. One important thing that comes up when coding while loops is the possibility of an infinite loop. This happens when the while condition is initially met so that it enters the main code, but the main code never affects the while condition so that it's never violated. In this case, the code will continue to run indefinitely since there's never a stopping criteria. We can demonstrate this by defining a new variable m that will increment by one on each iteration. However, the while condition is still checking the value n at the start of each iteration, and since the value n is never altered in the code, the while criteria is always met. In the case of an infinite loop, you can click into the command window and type Control c to terminate any current process. In general, to avoid infinite while loops, the variable in the while criteria should change on each iteration. One additional thing to note is the format of the while loop versus the for loop. The syntax for both the for loop and the while loops looks similar with the primary difference being the for loop is executed a known number of times and the while loop continues to execute until a certain criteria is met. One important thing that results from this is that in a for loop, the loop index is automatically incremented upon each iteration. In a while loop, since the loop index is not an integral component of the structure of the loop, if you choose to use some type of incrementing index in a while loop, you must increment it manually. That's why in the previous examples, there's some code like n equals n plus 1, or m equals m plus 1. Let's take a look at one more example. In this example, we want to determine the number of consecutive integers we can add up before reaching some upper limit. For instance, how many consecutive integers can we add before hitting the value 11? That would be 4, since 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. If we try 5 integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, we get a sum of 15, which exceeds the upper value of 11. This problem is conducive to using a while loop because for any arbitrary upper limit, the number of consecutive integers changes. In other words, the number of times the loop will execute will be different depending on the upper value. We can start by defining variables representing the total sum and the current integer. Then we can structure our while loop to check the total sum does not exceed some upper limit. In the main code, we'll first want to increment the integer, and then compute the updated total 
by adding the current integer to the previous total. And that's it for the loop. We can do a test on a small number so we can verify if the code works. Setting the upper limit to 12 and displaying the total value and the final integer that was added, we get a total of 15 and an integer of 5, which doesn't seem quite right. We wanted the code to produce the largest total without exceeding the upper limit. If we examine the code carefully, we can pretend that the code is at the end of its second to last iteration. In other words, in this case, n would equal 4 and the total would equal 10. What happens next is that the program goes back to the top of the while loop and checks to see if the total is less than 12, which it still is. So the main code is executed one final time, this time incrementing n so that it equals 5, and then adding 5 to the previous total, giving us 15. Of course, this time when the code returns to the top of the while loop condition, it is now violated since 15 is not less than or equal to 12, so then the loop terminates. The issue with this is that the loop essentially executed one too many times just by the nature of how it was coded. A fix for this common issue that arises when using while loops is to simply backtrack by one step at the end of the loop. Now, for an upper limit of 12, we get the correct maximum total and the correct integer. We can then start testing larger numbers with our code. For example, if the upper limit is 1000, then, according to our code, the largest consecutive sum is 990, with the integers 1 through 44 being summed. Of course, we can test this simply by using the sum function and adding the values 1 through 44 manually. We can also test to see if we went any further, say adding the values 1 to 45, then we would have exceeded the upper limit of 1000. In the next video, we'll explore the if statement and also start combining some of the iterative looping techniques together to solve more complex problems.